Now I did want to plug in the predictive equations for healthy individuals vary from those that are critically ill. Hello everyone, my name is Kim. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist, a certified diabetes educator, and owner of KimRoseDietitian.com. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, there's some videos below that I do want you to take a look at, so don't be shy. Go ahead and look around. Familiarize yourself with my channel, with my videos, with my content, and remember to comment, like, and subscribe. For my returning subscribers, welcome. So today we're going to be speaking about the predictive equations for healthy individuals. Now I did want to plug in the predictive equations for healthy individuals vary from those that are critically ill. We're going to take a look at the predictive equations for critically ill individuals next week. So let's just jump right into the three predictive equations for healthy individuals. So the first one that we're going to look at is the Harris-Benedict equation. This is one of the oldest equations for calculating the predictive energy. So this equation was formulated in the 1920s by Harris and his colleagues. And this equation is no longer used in clinical practice for dietitians. It is now retired and looked back as a historical landmark. So the way that this equation is, let's take a look at it. You can see that this equation differentiates if you're a man or a woman as well as it takes into consideration your weight that is in pounds your height that is in inches and your age that is in years now after you figure out the estimated metabolic rate you take this answer and you multiply it by an activity factor the Harris Benedict equation comes with an activity factor as well so taking a look at these activity factors it ranges depending on if you follow a sedentary lifestyle to a really active lifestyle. So after you multiply your metabolic rate by your activity factor, then you get the estimated calorie needs of the individual. One thing that Harris did realize about his formula is that it tend to overestimate the metabolic rate of individuals. And because of this, years later, in the early 1990s, Mifflin and his colleagues came up with another predictive equation, which is the most popular equation used in clinical practice today. And that is the Mifflin St. Jour formula, MSJ as an abbreviation. So the Mifflin St. Jour formula does have some similarities with the Harris Benedict equation. It takes into consideration your age, your height, your weight, as well as your gender. So let's take a look at the MSJ formula. The MSJ formula, as stated before, is broken up into two categories, male as well as female. But the weight is not in pounds, it's in kilograms. And the height is not in inches, it's in centimeters. And the age is in years. So definitely knowing how to convert pounds to kilograms as well as height into centimeters is imperative in this equation. So and additionally, the MSJ formula does take into consideration an activity factor just as the Harris-Benedict equation does. So one thing about the MSJ formula is that it's not so accurate with calculating the energy needs for individuals with a BMI over 30, but it is definitely recommended for use for registered dietitians when calculating the estimated energy needs for their clients. There's another equation that came along in the early 2000s by Livingston and his colleague, and it's called the Livingston equation. So the Livingston formula really wanted to do away with all these variables that the MSJ and the Harris-Benedict equation took into consideration. Now, just to remind you, the variables that the MSJ and the Harris-Benedict took into consideration were the high the age, the weight, as well as the gender. So the Livingston equation just took a look at the gender as well as the age and the weight. So this is what the Livingston equation looks like. And you can see the Livingston equation is a little more complex in nature than the Harris-Benedict and the mifflin saint Jour because it has an exponent. And not only that, it's the negative exponent. So if you're a person that is not really too confident in your mathematical skills, 
skills and taking the negative exponent of a number, this equation may be a little bit more difficult for you. So in the validation study of the Livingston equation, it still showed that the MSJ equation was more accurate in calculating the predictive energy needs for individuals that are overweight or obese, but the Livingston equation does have a little more edge on the MSJ equation when calculating the estimated predictive energy calorie needs for individuals with a BMI less than 20. So guys, this is a brief introduction into the three predictive equations for healthy individuals. If you have any questions about any of these three predictive equations, go ahead and leave it in my comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. As usual, remember to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Have a good day. Bye.